God bless you. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is Landmark Church of Holiness through Christ Outreach Ministry, located at 1523 West Washington Street in South Bend, Indiana, where we preach the gospel without compromise, the unadulterated, unmixed, true gospel of deliverance, reaching out to a dying world, letting you know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Set your heart, your mind, your ears to receive this man of God who will show you the way to eternal life. Receive ye him, our pastor, Bishop Thomas H. Willis, Jr. God bless you. like to invite you to watch us every Sunday afternoon on Facebook Live at 1.30 p.m. on the page of Bishop Thomas H. Willis Jr. and to listen to our evening service every Sunday on WUBS 89.7 at 6.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern in South Bend, Indiana. We also have a Sunday school conference call line every sun Saturday evening at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time and 8 o'clock Eastern, taught by Evangelist Beverly Willis. The telephone number is 605-313-5142, and the access code is 388-999-POUND. If you are not able to tune in at this time, you can call the playback number, which is 605-313-5153. Using the same access code. If your phone carrier for this line charges, please hang up and dial 716 293 9720 and then redial the 605 number in the access code. We are so happy to be able to share what God has put in our hearts and mind that you may be able to be blessed of God and strengthened in holiness. And our prayer will be Minister Frazier. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you right now, God. Oh, God, we magnify your name right now, God. Oh, God, we ask that you move in this telecast service, oh, God. Move in a mighty way, oh, God. Get yourself the glory, the honor, and the praise, oh, God. You are worthy, oh, God. You worthy and highly lifted up, oh, God. Oh, God, we coming boldly, oh, God, before the throne of your grace, oh, God. Asking for mercy, oh, God. Help in the time of need, oh, God. Send forth your word today, God. Touch somebody, oh, God. Bind every broken heart, oh, God. Heal in the name of Jesus, oh, God. Set captives free, oh, God. Loose shackles. Oh God, break strongholds, oh God, heal Jesus, oh God, get yourself the glory, the honor, and the praise, oh God, forever, oh God, in Jesus' name. We love you, we thank you, and we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name, God. And we will have scriptures read by Brother Banks. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then can they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Oh, yeah. I've read for your hearing from the chapter of chapter 10 of Romans, the 13th through the 15th verse. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the word for the edification of our souls. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And I'd also like to invite you to our third annual women's convention yeah. teleconference. Yeah. Uh, today is the last night. So we uh, ask you to come and join, bring a friend, yeah. a co-worker, yeah. a family member, and come hear a word from the Lord from these great women of God. Oh, yeah. And you truly will be blessed. Amen. 
and now uh, we'll be bringing up our speaker on today, which is our very own Bishop Thomas H. Willis Jr. Say amen as he come. Amen. amen. With a special love, save me by his grace. He pleaded, and he pleaded, he pleaded my case. I'm so glad what they do. Special love, reached out with his arms so strong. He picked me up, turned me around, gave me a brand new song. Jesus, now to him, now to him, now to him, I belong. Look here, you may remember. Oh, yeah. Stayed on these. 
stayed on the earth. The earth is the Lord. Isn't the earth the Lord? And the fullness thereof. Can set you free. When God has, when God has set me free. <laughs> why should you be so bound? Why when God set me free? So why so should I be bound? When, when, when my Jesus died for Jesus you and me. For you and me. Listen, this is what He did for me. He has lived a keep you. Amen. Amen. And he's still keeping me. He's keeping me alive. Amen. And I'm still walking in holiness. Amen. And I give God the glory. I give God the honor. I give God the praise. Amen. Somebody say he didn't have to do it, but he did. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh God. Amen. He could have let us die in our sins. Amen. But God brought us back. Amen. 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 He dropped the charges. Now he's the keeper of our soul. <laughs> Woo! Way in. I am glad. Amen. That God dropped the charges. He didn't hold it against me. Amen. Amen. Because he would that no man should perish, but that all shall come to what? To repentance. Amen. And I'm so glad I repented one day. 
of my sin. And I wasn't just saying I'm sorry just to say I'm sorry. But I wanted to be changed. I wanted to, amen, I wanted to be a new creature. Amen. I wanted those old things to be passed away. And then beholding those things to become new in my life. Amen. And I've been walking in holiness over 40 some years. Amen. And I'm glad about it. And I don't care who don't want to get you. If you get tired of me saying that, that's all right. I'm going to say it for you again. I've been saved over 40 some years. Amen. Pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. And if I can do it, you can do it too. You just got to turn it over to Jesus and let him work it out. Somebody say, yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah, because you know I get stirred up there a little bit. Yeah, man, because when you start talking about the goodness of Jesus and all these stuff, you look like something down on the inside of your belly, begin to move. Oh, y'all better come on with me now. Amen, yeah, because God is good. I don't care what the world is doing out there. Let them go out there and have their fun. Amen. I ain't missing nothing. That's, what that, that's the kind of attitude you got to have. I ain't missing nothing. And one thing I do want to miss, though, is hell. All right. Amen. Go on to hell. Amen. 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 But I thank God. I thank God for Jesus Christ, the righteous judge, who shall judge the quick and the dead. Do you hear what I'm saying? All of us got to stand before God one day to give an account of the things that we do in this life. Amen. And look, you can't get away with it because the eyes of the Lord is in what? Every place. Beholding what? The good and the what? Evil. Amen. But thank God. Thank God. Amen. I have to glorify God. Amen. I hope you enjoyed those two songs. Hey, Jesus dropped the charges. Amen. And he'll give you peace in the midst of the storm. Amen. If you ain't got no peace in the midst of the storm, you ain't doing something right. Oh, y'all right, better come on with me now because he is a peacemaker. Oh, y'all better come on now. We know the devil comes to stir up your, you know, stir up stuff. Amen. Keep you, amen, sitting on the edge of your seat. But, amen, you can have, you can go to sleep with sweet peace. Am I right about it? Amen. I got a little something, something for you today. Amen. On this what they so-called Easter Sunday. <laughs> Amen. Right. And that wasn't originated by God. Amen. That was originated by the devil. Right. Yeah. Amen. Anything that can get in the way of, of God, for people worshiping God, you know, that's what he brought forth. Right. Amen. Paganism. Yeah. That's what it came from, paganism. Amen. It, it didn't have nothing to do. They tried to make it, you know, reverence to God, but it wasn't to God. Amen. Amen. But Christ died so that we, amen, we might be sanctified. Yeah. Amen. Holy, undefiled. Yeah. Amen. After eating all those eggs and whatnot and, and chasing the rabbits and all that sort of stuff and holding the baskets, did that save you? Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> did, it, did it free you from sin? Amen. But the precious blood of Jesus Christ, amen, that was shed for us on that day. Amen. That's what we got to remember. He died for us. And I'm, I'm look, I'm going to tell you something. He didn't die for me in vain. Amen. Don't let what God done, what God, uh, Jesus' death, amen, be in vain for you. Come on now. What you mean about that? By not taking advantage of him, amen, of his mercy and his, amen, and his goodness. Amen. He died for you so that you won't be what? Lost. Amen. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? Amen. So I can preach. I can preach that Jesus came. Jesus came before Christmas. Jesus came. And I can preach that. And I can preach uh, Jesus rose before Easter. I don't have to wait till a certain day. Certain time. Certain time and season. I got to give God the glory every day. Amen. Amen. Now. Hold on to your hats. It's not bad. It's something good. I got a subject for you today. And the question is, now make sure you take this the right way now. Okay? The question is, hell, no. The question is, you understand what I'm saying? Hell, no. 
In other words, do I want to go to hell? No. Heaven? Yes. But it's your choice. Somebody say it's my choice. It's your choice whether you go to heaven or hell. It's your choice if you take advantage of Christ dying for you. That you might receive what? Eternal life. And that you give up sin so you can have eternal life. Everybody that dies is not going to heaven. And it's not, some people say when you die, you're done. No, you're not done. Amen. Because there is an after thing that happens after you die. Amen. You either go into the presence of God in paradise or you go to the, what they call the place where you, whether you think, the torment, where you be tormented. Amen. So you go, you can either go one or two places. Amen. Amen. And so, but the, but determination is yours. Your, that's your decision. Did you hear what I'm saying? The scripture says in Romans 3, 3 and 4 says, What if some don't believe or did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Mm -hmm. God forbid. Let God be true, but every man be a what? A liar. Amen. Amen. Somebody say liar. Liar. Amen. That thou mightest be justified in saying, and might have overcome when thou art judged. Mm -hmm. Amen. We're going to get judged one day. Oh, yeah. Yes, we are. And what we do down here on this earth determines whether we go to heaven right. or hell. That's Amen. Right. And you just can't go up there and stand before God and say, well, God, you know what? I just sinned a little bit. You can't have no sin. That's right. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. You got to be what they call street clean. Yes. Clean all over. Yes. Streaky clean. Amen? That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Without spot, blemish, wrinkle, or any such thing. That's the Bible. That's the Bible. Amen. Amen. Now, if you don't believe in the Bible, that's your problem. Amen. You believe in all these other books, but I'm telling you the best book that you can ever pick up is the Bible. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And I'm talking yes, about it. And I ain't talking about all these, all, all these Bibles that man, yeah, you talking about man-made Bibles. There are some really Bibles that man made. Yes, amen. They taking out scriptures and right. inserting scriptures yeah. and, and taking out stuff and changing stuff and retranslating stuff and all that sort of stuff. But when you tell the truth, they tell you men wrote that. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Come on. The Bible said men wrote it as they were what? Moving. Led by God. As they were led by the, by the power and the amen. holiness of God. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. What, what sinner would say, you know, you got to stop whole monging? And he loved doing it. I said sinner. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Right. He kind of take that out of there. I told you they, in some of these Bibles, I read, I, read, I read some of these Bibles where they took some of the scriptures out. They skipped verse 37 and mm -hmm. 38 and 39 and come back with verse 40. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, the devil knows how to take things out. Yes, he does. And put things in. Yes, he does. And you know what? He's the deceiver of the brethren. Yes, amen. amen. He is a deceiver of the brethren. Amen. Now, when we talk about hell, it's the English word. The English word hell is defined in our dictionary as the abode of evil spirits. Mm -hmm. That's where evil spirits dwell. And that's where your spirit go if you're not saved. That's right. That's right. Your Amen. body goes into the ground, yes. but your spirit and soul goes to the place of hell. Amen. Of damnation. That's right. Amen. Amen. A place of torment. Amen. Now, you don't necessarily just go, but it, 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 it calls, it, it's just like you in hell, but you know you lost. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Because when you come out of torment, then you're going to be going to hell. The lake of fire. Because hell is also is represented as the lake of fire. That's right. Amen. So it says the, the abode of evil spirits, infernal region, place of eternal punishment or extreme torment. In ancient times, now this is what has happened in the ancient times. In the ancient times, the place of departed spirits. Amen. Amen. And we look up the word infernal means belonging to hell. Ginner means a place of future torment. Hell. Hell or the lake of fire. Amen? 
Amen. So I'm just giving you some of the de definitions of hell. So whether you believe it or not, amen, there is a hell. Yes. Amen. Even though people say hell is down here on earth, but hell is going to be casted into hell. Amen. And hell going to be casted into the lake of fire. All right, all right. Amen. Yeah. So you, you, don't think you're getting away because, it's, well, it's hell down here on earth. Right. But you better make sure you live right when you leave here. All right. Amen. Because what is, what is, do it make sense to go through hell up here and then still go to hell when you mm -hmm. leave here? No, no. Do that make sense? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Amen. Mm -mm. I want to go to a place of peace. Amen. Amen. Nothing but peace. Come on now. Amen. 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 But let me read this to you here. And just pray for me a little bit. Amen. It says, also, hell, this is the torment compartment of Shoal, Hades, where the wicked souls have always gone and will always go until the end of the millennium. Every time somebody die, they're going to a place of torment, waiting to be tossed into the lake of fire. Amen? Then the wicked will be brought out to be reunited with the resurrected immortal body. So your spirit and your soul will go to a place of torment. But when it's time for you to come back and get thrown into the lake of fire, it's going to return back to that body mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to be turned into the lake of fire. Right. Come on. Which is hell. All right. Look it up. Oh, yeah. Then the wicked shall be brought out of there to be reunited with the resurrected immortal bodies and cast into the lake of fire for eternity. Amen. Did you hear that? Amen. Amen. Eternity means forever. Amen. It'll never cease. Mm -hmm. It'll never stop. The fire will not ever go out. Amen. Now, this might sound unreal, but according to the scripture, this is a true fact. Amen. What if some don't believe? Do that make the faith of God? I said that earlier of none effect. Well, they don't know what they're talking about. I really don't believe. I believe that God is just too merciful, amen, to throw us into hell. But don't count on it. Amen. All right. Don't count on the God, amen. amen, saying, well, okay, you come on up anyway. I know you had it in mind that you wanted to start, you know, being saved, but you didn't get there. He's going to say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Amen. Into the everlasting fire. Amen. And some people might think that's cruel. That is a cruel punishment. But that is something that sinners uh, deserve. For the wages of sin is it's death. death. But Amen. the gift of God is eternal life. Yes, so this Lord. is what you're getting paid for, for what you did. Amen. When you was down here on earth. Amen. You sinned when you was down here on earth. Amen. You, some of you all ain't even thinking about God. Even when you go to church, you're not really thinking about God. Right. You're thinking about what's going to happen after you get out of church. Right. Right. Amen. I'm going to meet my boyfriend, and, you know, we're going to do this, and we're going to do that. They do that. You Come know on. what? If Come you on. stay like that, you're going to end up in hell. Amen. Amen. And I cannot send you to hell. I mean, I, I just no, don't like no. the preachers that send folks to hell. I ain't sending mm -hmm. folks to hell. Amen. I'm just warning you of That's hell. That's right. Because I don't want you to go to hell. Come on now. Amen. 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 And, and you got the nerve when you get upset with people sometimes, you tell them to go to hell. See. Why do you do that? Come on. That's a, bad, that's, a, that's a curse. Yes, it is. Don't you know you cursing the person when you're telling them, go to hell? Oh, y'all better come on now. Right, amen. amen. But you don't thank God you don't have the power to do that. Amen. 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 Let me see something else here. It says, the abyss or bottomless pit. This is the abode of demons and angelic beings. No human soul, soul and spirit ever go to the abyss. God had that separate for the angels mm -hmm. that fallen. That's right. He's saving them for last. And this, the Old Testament equivalent of abandon is translated destruction. Mm -hmm. This is all in the Bible. This is not something, all you have to do is just go to your Bible and read and read up the hell and, and Hades. It's all in the Bible. We ain't trying to pull your leg. We ain't not trying to put you in, in hell. Come on. We're trying to keep you from going to hell. Right. Amen. Amen. And we're trying to encourage you to stay safe so you won't go to hell. Amen. Come on now. Eh? Amen. The lake of fire. This is the eternal hell perdition of fallen angels, demons, wicked men. 
And sometimes that's what people think too. Well, I ain't wicked. Anytime you're not serving God, that's wicked. Yes. Come on, come on. I don't Amen. care what you do. I don't care. You could be the sweetest person down here on earth, but if you ain't living for God, that's wicked because Amen. you're going against God. Against God, God. You haven't accepted Christ yes. in your life. Amen. Get how much time you go to church and how long you stay in church, you still got to live a life of holiness. That's right. Amen. Well, I went to church and I get on my knees and pray, but are you living right? Right. Are you living right? It's, it's on, curse man. words coming out of your mouth every now and then. Amen. Are you lying? Every now, it ain't no such thing as a little white lie. No, 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 no. They didn't put a color to a lie See? now. You know, whether it's a white lie, the, the white lie and the black lie are going to heaven, to, going See? to hell too. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's go. Hell, the scripture said, hell has enlarged itself. And we're gonna read that. I don't know what I got that part on there for. Mm -hmm. It says, hell has enlarged itself. The more people die out of Christ for the world's entertainment or have not accepted Christ before he come back for the saints will be lost eternally. And this is, you can find this on the internet. Amen. Woe unto them. The scripture says in Isaiah 5, 11 through 16. Get that from me, evangelist. If you don't have it. Isaiah 5, 11 through 16. I want you to read the scripture with me. I'm not, this is just not something that I'm just making up. This is something that's in the Bible. And I told you, I believe in God's word. Amen. Because it was written by holy men of God. It's amazing that how people can believe a lie rather than the truth. Amen. But that's the enemy doing that. Amen. You got that? Amen. What did it say? Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning that they may follow strong drink. Mm -hmm. That continue until night, till wine inflame them. Now, are you doing that? <laughs> Come on, now examine yourself. Amen. Thinking you're going to heaven anyway. Come on now. <laughs> Thinking just because you go to church anyway. But what did it say again? What that verse? Woe, woe what? Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning. That they may follow strong drink. Uh -huh. That continue until night. Uh -huh. Till wine inflame them. Uh -huh. The twelfth word. Go ahead. And the harp and the vial, the tabret and pipe and wine are in their feet. Oh, they having fun. They but, having fun in the world. Amen. amen. They enjoy themselves. How many of us didn't enjoy ourselves when we was out there in the world? Come on now. Amen. I enjoyed myself when I was out there in the world. I did. It was fun. But I had to give up that type, that type of fun. Amen. Amen. Uh-huh. But they regard not the work of the Lord. But they did what? They regard not the work of the Lord. They regard not the work of the Lord. Uh-huh. Neither consider the operation of his hands. Neither consider what God wanted. Amen. They didn't regard what God wanted. They did it foolishly. God's people did it foolishly. Come on. Uh-huh. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity. Because they have no knowledge, mm -hmm. and their honorable men are famished, mm -hmm. and their multitude dried up with thirst. But well, what did the 14th verse say? Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself. Because they don't want to receive God, and it's all about the worldly pleasure. Mm -hmm. Hell is enlarging itself. Oh, Each time a person dies out of Christ, the hell gets larger and larger. And we're going to have more people going to hell than, going, than people going to heaven. Amen. Right. Amen. Because the Bible says this is a straight and narrow way. Amen. There's only going to few that's going to find that that's way. That's right. But broad Amen. is the way that leads to death. Oh, yeah. I'm only telling you what the Bible said. Don't hang up. Don't, don't, don't cut it off. Amen. If, this, if you ain't doing this, if you're going to heaven, then just keep on listening. Uh huh. Go ahead. Therefore, hell. But Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. There's no certain size to it. Without measure, it ain't by fourteen by fifteen, sixteen <laughs> by seventeen. This so deep. Don't you know it's gonna be a bottomless pit? Yes. 
which means God has got it fixed where you're going to keep falling in hell and falling and falling. I just can't see that. Well, let me just tell you, you got to believe that. Amen. Amen. Look what's going on today in this world when the prophecies come. The, the world will wax worse and worse. Men will be lovers of themselves and, and, and bolsters and, and proud and all. But you see it's happening. Amen. When you see that, you've got to, you've got to believe what the, other, what the other scriptures are saying. Amen. You see it happening. Men are lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. Amen. They don't care nothing about God nowadays. And it's going to get worse than that. Did we finish? Go ahead. And their glory and their multitude and their pomp. And he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. And all that fun that you have and all that glory that you didn't obtain when you was down here on earth and all the, all the multitude, I don't care how many, how many it is, and their pomp, and he that rejoices shall descend into what? Lake of fire. Amen. Hell. Forever falling. Forever. Think about it. Fix it in your... Now, this is not fictitious. This is real. That's this is right. real. That's right. Amen. Amen. We're going to go to the scripture where man went to torment. All right. This is real. Do you believe it? Yes, I Amen. believe this. Amen. The Bible said it's appointed once for man to die. After that, after that the judgment. Yes. Ain't people dying? Amen, amen. Isn't that real? Yes, it is. People yes, are is. dying. Amen. Every day there is a funeral. But the Bible said it's appointed once for man to die. Yes. And you know why they die? You know why we, we die? Because of sin. Mm -hmm. It's a curse. Yes. Because Adam and Eve disobeyed God. It was a curse. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you should return back to the dust. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. By the sweat of your brow, you're going to have to work. Mm -hmm. That was a curse on man. But God came to take away the curse on us. Amen. As long as we're living holy, we'll still be blessed. But we're going to have to go through some things. We're still going to have to die. Mm -hmm. But you better make sure you're ready to die. Well, how you be ready? Give God your life. Amen. And amen, live holy amen. every day. Hallelujah. Amen. Sanctified. I ain't talking about amen. half the time. I'm talking about every day. Every day. 24 hours a come day. On, come on. Even when somebody is not looking at you, you're going to be holy. Come on now. Amen. Because God's eyes amen. is on you. Amen. And don't you know the books? The Bible talks about the books being open. Mm -hmm. And those, amen, that's committing sin is written in the books. Amen. Did you hear that? Amen. Books. But those that I say are going to be written in the book. Yeah. That's kind of letting me know there's going to be more people in the books than it is in that one book. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of people. Amen. From the beginning up to the time that Christ come back, that's when, when God getting ready to judge the world and they begin to stand before God. And there's going to be a judgment before God. And they're going to judge the people, the sinners, from the saints. The sinners, he's going to say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. To the saints, he's going to tell them to go up yonder, mm -hmm. go up higher. I'm just paraphrasing it. Mm -hmm. To heaven, to glory, to bright glory. That's what I want God to say. Amen? All right. Well done, thy good and faithful Thank servant. You, See, you got Amen. to keep the faith. You got to keep the faith. Amen. You can't be wishy and washy in, in God. You can't be, you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You got to stand still and see the salvation of All Lord. All right. Amen. Amen. Can I keep going? I'm going to yes, do this. Sir. I'm going to do this. And go ahead. The 15th. And the mean man shall be brought down. And the mean man, even the mean man. I don't care how mean he is. <laughs> he going to hell. Shall be brought down. Uh -huh. And the mighty man shall be humbled. Oh, they're going to be humbled then, boy. <laughs> going to be humbled. When that time comes, there's going to be a lot of people repenting then. Okay, all right, I see. They're going to want to humble themselves. I've get saved. It's too late. Mm -hmm. right. And the mean man shall be brought down. And the mighty man shall be humbled. And the eyes of the lofty, they're going to be lofty then. They're going to be humble. Mm-hmm. Y'all hear me? Amen. They're going to be meek now. I hear you. It's too late. 
Because when you stand before God and you go to hell or go to term, torment, that's too late to Amen. say, God, give me another chance. I heard them say it, but, you know, it's going to be a lot of talking. A lot of talking. Like, I, you know what? I, I just didn't believe that preacher. I just didn't believe that missionary. I just didn't believe that evangelist. I just thought they were just, you know, just, you know, faking it and stuff like that. But, I, you know, I hate to say this, but it's too late. Mm -hmm. you, you can't change it. You can't get out of it. You're just, you just in torment forever. I, I, you know what I do? I look at myself. And I, I, I'm so adamant about being saved to the point where God just visualizing how hell is and being in it makes me want to hold on to God more. Amen. For real. Now, let me just say this. When I backslid, it wasn't that I didn't believe in hell because I brought up in, in sanctified church that talked about hell, talked about going to hell. So I believed in that. But the thing about it was that I allowed the enemy to talk to my mind about going out into the world and having a good time believing that I was going to get back. That's why most of us did it because we felt like, we, well, we get a chance to get back. You know, God have mercy on us. But what if he hadn't? I'd have been lost. There were times that I was in, I wasn't in accidents, but I was, getting ready to have an accident, you know, getting ready to run into a, a, a train track, you know, getting ready to hit, somebody's getting ready to hit me, and God just straightened up the car and stuff, and I just, still I didn't have sense enough to run to God. Mm -hmm. right. Hiding on my way to go get some reefer. Still didn't have sense enough to know that God was still being merciful towards amen, me. Amen, amen. Some of you all out there know better. That's out there that's in backslid. Know better. Know you're going to hell, but you're taking a chance. Is it worth it when you find yourself in the lake of fire? When you find yourself in torment? Think about it. Sit down and think about it. Sometimes you sit down and you think about it and you start crying. And you know how I know that? Know, know about that? Because I've been through that. There were times when I went out and went to the taverns and went and partied and all that sort of stuff. When I was at the party, I was feeling good. I was feeling great, you know, with my buddies and with my... But when I got home, it was like torment. The Spirit of God was warring with me because I knew better. And heaven is beginning to fall upon me. And I began to start crying out to God, knowing that my soul would be lost if I, be, if I, you know, stay out there in the world. And every time I would come back from going out, I would come back and I'd be crying to God and I'd be saying, God, God, you got to help me. Mm -hmm. This is for real. I, be, I did that for weeks. God, you got to help me. What can I do? I knew what to do. But the devil sometimes don't bring that. He don't want you to bring He don't bring that to your mind. He won't allow that to bring it to your mind. Come on now. But every, every time I would start crying and, and tears coming down my eyes, and I would ask God, God, I need help. I need help. I knew I needed help. I was raised in a holiness church. I needed help. But I couldn't do it by myself. I'm telling y'all, sin is... It's greater than you. Mm -hmm. You be wanting to give it up. You be wanting to come back to God. Come you be now. wanting, but sin got a hold of you. Yes, the devil yes. got a hold of you. And Amen. you want the devil to, I feel that in my spirit. Come on now, come on. You want the devil to let you go, but you can't let it go because he's got a hand on it. He got a hook on you. Mm -hmm. And you can't get loose. You know you want to get loose. You want to try to get loose, but it's just so hard for you to get loose. And you're sitting there and you're murmuring and you're complaining and you're... God knows how to take away every tear. I did that for a couple of weeks. And the last time I went to God, after coming back from the club, three or four o'clock in the morning, and I sat down in the dark on my bed. You know, Brother Tyler, I get him to start crying again. The heaviness came on. It was like God was chasing at me, chasing at me, hoping that I would hear 
or understand what was going on. And I kept going to him, and this last time I came to him, I said, God, what am I going to do? He said, you know what to do. That's exactly how you said it to me. Because he knew I was raised up in the holiness church. He said, you know exactly what to do. Now, he might not tell you that. But that's what he told me because I knew better. I was in the church. I was sanctified. I, was, I had the baptism of the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and gave it all up for the world. Amen. And God was letting me know, okay, you having fun, but then after a while, the spirit of heaven just began to fall on me. I said, wasn't but the chastening of God. Whom God loves, he what? He chastens. He, chases. he loves everybody. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the things that you're going through right now, and sometimes the heaviness that you're having for being out there in the world and stuff like that, you know, some of y'all know right now that some of y'all are crying, y'all tears, you don't know what's going on. This God is calling for you. Come on now. Reaching out for you. Some of you amen. don't understand, but I'm telling you, God is reaching out for you. Amen, amen. He don't want you to have that peace. He don't want you to be settled in sin. Say that, say that. Devil wants you out there. He wants you to amen. stay out there. You know why? Because he wants you to go to hell with him. Right, right, right. Amen. Amen. He's lost. He ain't got no more hope. All right, all right. Say it. Amen. So he's trying to get somebody else to go to hell with amen. him. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. But God is so good and merciful. And he knows how to he knows how to chase them folks to the point where I know something's wrong in my spirit. Y'all ever felt that? Amen. In your spirit, you felt like I just felt like we can either override it, we can, you know, either roll, either override it or fall, give into it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there were times I override, ride, you know, override it, <laughs> whatever the word. I, I, That's all right. I, I, didn't, it's all I just right. didn't take so much attention to it. But eventually, this time, I said, I, "You know what to do." I couldn't argue with God. My hands was too short <laughs> to box or argue with God. I bowed my head. I had to get up. I did. After all that, do you think I still ran back to God right away? After he told me I knew what to do, I stopped asking because then <laughs> he... He let me know, you know, what you coming to me for? That's, that's the kind of like, you know what you coming, you know. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all out there, you know. Amen, amen. Why am I going through this? How come I'm going through this? And how come I'm doing that? Because you know you need to be in church. Right, amen. God's amen. church. Amen. You need to be saved. Yes, Lord, amen. You need to be delivered. Amen. You wonder why things ain't working out. God suffered to be, to get your attention. God knows how to get your attention. Mm -hmm. Some people got ran back to God because they, they were almost close to dying. Amen. And they just realized that God spared their life and said, I'm going back to church. I'm going back to God. But there are some people that don't get that, that kind of mercy. Mm hmm God just allowed him to be taken away. And that's not unfair. Amen. Because he's giving every man a chance to be that's saved. Right. Every amen, man to receive amen. him. And like I said, it's your choice whether you right. want to go to hell. We'll talk that's about right. heaven later. Amen. But it's your choice. Amen. Amen. God didn't do it. Yes, amen. You did it. Amen. I don't want to hear that mess. Call it what, we, what God said is mess. God will let you know who he is. How many of us know God will let Amen. you know that I'm yes, God? Yes, he will. Yes, he will. You're going to honor me. You're going to respect me. But you know what? I'm glad he chasing me. Amen. I told you, boy. And when I came, I didn't come back right then, but when I did come back, I came back. And I still, when I came back and went to church and stuff like that, my mind was still talking, thinking about partying, doing something that night. 
and I was just going to church so I could please my wife because she got back into the church and she asked me to go to church. She didn't, she didn't, you know, jump on me. She didn't say, you know, you need to be in the church and you know, you shouldn't be out in the world and, and all that. She didn't say nothing. She didn't bother me. She just said, baby, I just want you to go to church with me one day. And I said, okay. That's all I said. Two weeks later, he just came to me. This way it came to me. Okay, you promised her that you was going to go to church with her. So I'm the type of person when I make a promise, I'm going to try to honor that promise. So I said, well, it's been a while, so I'm going to go. So, but after that, you know, after church, <laughs> this, was, this was my thinking. I'm just telling you my experience. How many know that sometimes you can have a plan, but God got a different plan? Come on now. Yes, he does. <laughs> oh, yes, My he plan does. was to Amen. <laughs> go back out there and then, you know. But anyway, went to church. We sat down in the back and Bishop Apostle R.L. Mitchell began to preach. And, for, and again, he, he started talking about hellfire. Going to hell. See, I thank God for these hellfire preachers. Amen. Oh, Amen. You, you can say what you want. Yeah. Hey Amen. You, 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 you can have somebody that's going to tickle your fancy, mm -hmm. but is that going to get you in heaven? That's right. That's right. Going to encourage you. You know, Amen. God knows, and, and God knows where everybody's not perfect and all that. So I'll give you the excuses to sin. Mm -hmm. It ain't nothing but the devil. That's the devil. Van just talked about it last week. False prophets. Yes, yes, amen. Deceiving many. Many are being deceived by false prophets. Amen. God knows that everybody's not perfect. Well, the Bible told us to be perfect. Right. Oh, y'all better come on now. Amen. We can be perfect. Oh, yes, oh, yes. In everything we do when it comes down to God. Amen. But anyway, I went. Just giving my testimony. I'm hoping somebody listening. And I sat there and I listened to the apostle talk about the hellfire. And I always had it set in my mind. And this is the reason, this is the excuse that I use not going back to church. <laughs> okay? It was that when I go back to church, I want to make sure that I'm, I want to make sure. Did you hear that? I want to make sure that I'm going to stay saved. That's why I didn't go back because I was one of those that was in and out. I had a, a good motive because I didn't want to keep going in and out, but that want to make sure that I'm going to stay safe. I couldn't keep myself safe. That's right. That's right. God had to do it. So how I'm going to make sure that I'm going to keep myself safe? No, so I got to depend on God to Amen. keep me safe, Amen. and I got to Every do what day. I'm supposed to do to stay That's safe. Right. Amen. But the devil have you say have me saying, well, I got to make sure that I can stay safe. So then, you know. I didn't want to be if the devil say you've you been in and out. You've been in and out. So, you know, you, you don't want to go back because you want to make sure you stay saved. See, that's another trick of the enemy. That's right. To keep you out there in the world. Mm -hmm. But thanks be to God that gave me the victory. I went there. I'm going to tell you how God worked. I got there and I sat down and he started talking about hell, hellfire. And he said, forget about, you know, people talking about they're going to wait and see whether they're going to be able, you know, to stay saved and stuff. I went, what? The very thing that I was thinking he came across, you might not live to see tomorrow. And you wait on God later, waiting on God, you will get saved later. Thinking, you know, maybe I'll get saved later. Maybe, man, that just woke me up. Boom. Now, how did he, man? God gave it to him. That's a, that was a real preacher. Apostle, Apostle Bishop yes, was a real was. preacher. Yes, yes, amen. And when he said something, it happened. Amen. He said, you might not even live to see tomorrow. And I sat there in my seat. I'm going, man. He's right. You know, I'm sitting up here waiting to tell my wife, I'm going to make sure and stuff like that. He said, tomorrow ain't promised to you. And that's what I be telling, trying to tell some of you all out there that's listening. Tomorrow ain't promised to you. Amen. You, you ain't got no power on how long you're going to stay saved or that's how long right. you go. going. That's right. You know what I'm saying? God's got to help you do it. Amen. You ain't got no power on getting saved. And, come on. Come on. Now, God's got to give you that power. Amen. 
But you got to succumb to that power. Amen. You got to yield to God. That's right. That's what I forgot. I forgot that I had to give it over to God. Trying to do it myself. I did. When I, every time I tried to do it myself, I found myself out. I got, he called the altar call. And when he called the altar call, I decided to get up right there and there. I said, let me do this now because you know how you know sometimes you know when you sit there too long mm -hmm, and you start mm -hmm. thinking again, next thing you know, you don't do it. Mm -hmm. I didn't want that to happen to me. So I got up out of my seat when he said, come on up here to this altar. He meant God is calling you right now. But he was open to everybody that was there that wanted to be saved. Mm -hmm. But I know he was talking to me. I got up. And we had some some benches in the church that's pretty long. So I was like almost down at the by the wall of the one of the benches. And I had to get up and walk past people. And then when I looked down, I said, man, you gotta walk past all those people. See how the devil just he, he didn't want me to go up there. He did not want me to go up there. He did not want me. You're gonna have to walk past all those people. And I looked down the road. And I'm going, man, I'm going to have to say excuse me and all that sort of stuff. So I kind of sat on the end of the bitch. I'm telling you how the devil work on you, boy. The devil work on your mind. <laughs> That's stupid. You got to walk past all them folks and stuff like that. But you know what? <laughs> I wasn't going to hell either. <laughs> I got myself up out of that seat and I kept saying, excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> I did. I kept saying, excuse me. And then I got to the end of the bench. I'm telling you how the devil works. Minister Tony, I got to the end of the bench and stopped. The devil said, go to the bathroom. Boy, he was, getting, he was trying to get me. He was really trying. He knew that if I came back to God, I was going to be something else in God. The devil know how you gonna be. That's right. Yes, he does. Yes, he. He does. don't want you to get there. Come on now, amen. He know you go to heaven, but he don't want you to go to heaven. He wants you to go to hell. Amen, amen. Got on in. I'm hoping I'm encouraging somebody. Go right ahead, amen. Got at the end of the bench. Stood there. People were standing up, and the devil said, "Go to the bathroom." You know. Like play like you know Actually I stood there Just a few seconds And I looked back towards the, I did I looked back See that's what that's what gets you in trouble Looking back Come on You, you understand what I'm saying That's what got me out in the world Looking back The Bible says you look back You're not fit for the kingdom mm -hmm. So I looked back And I looked up front And I looked back again And I looked up front I said, Thomas, you got to make up your mind now. Because the, the, the open, it was an open call. And that ain't going to last all. See, God's got his arms open right now for you. But don't let him close it. Come on. Amen. Because once Amen. he closes it, he might not open it again. Amen. I, I hope, I'm Come trying to help somebody. Well say it. Amen. See, he gave me an open invitation. Yes. Now just think about it, went back there, I might not have never got back with God. Yes, Lord. But anyway, I made my decision. I'm going up front. I took my step. And let me tell you how saints are. When I began to start walking towards the front, the saints stood up. They were so happy. See, we're happy and glad when people come to God and want God because Amen. that's another soul that's going Amen. to heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. That gives us Glory joy down in our soul. Hallelujah. Yes, knowing, Lord. amen, that this is another person that the devil Amen. can't have. Come on now. Amen. And the saints be rejoicing. Yes. When amen. I started walking down the aisle, the saints started clapping. Start saying, thank the God. Thank you, Lord. Thank God. Thank God. Man, I felt so good and walking down there. I was like, oh, man, I went down there, down the aisle, and he began to lay hands on me. Let me tell you something else now. I told you I had the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I used to be sanctified. I used to shout and dance in the church. 
I was one of those that was singing in the choir, but I was saved there though. Okay? <laughs> I wasn't playing. I was I was active in the church. But you see how the devil tricked me and I allow him to I can't put all the blame on him because I didn't have to succumb to him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I can't say it wasn't nothing but you, devil. No, it was me and the devil because I wouldn't <laughs> gave in to it. Amen. But anyway, when I got up there and Bishop began to start praying, the saints began to start praying, God save him, God save him. And my bishop was so elated about me coming back to the church. And so uh, when I came up, he said, this is my boy here. He said, I ain't never had, you said, I think he did say he had a little trouble out of me or something mm -hmm. like that. You know, but it was, it was some, you know, always upset about something. But anyway, uh, but he was so glad to see me. And after he told me what to say, and I repeated what he said, God save me, God wash me, God cleanse me. I'm willing to give up my sins. And I repeated what he said. Brother Banks, I didn't feel nothing. I didn't even feel the presence of God. I just repeated what he told me to pre, you know, to repeat. But I did seriously, but I didn't feel that that up, that anointing that I once had before I left. But I had to believe. See, that's the thing. When you go up and get saved, you might not feel like you used to feel, but you got to believe that God saved you. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. And God's going to cleanse you because the devil says, see, nothing happened. Nothing happened. You didn't, you didn't need, God didn't even touch you. But in my mind, while I was thinking about that, I said, man, I ain't feeling nothing. I don't feel, I don't feel no illumination. I don't feel nothing. But I was just repeating what mm -hmm. the preacher said. But I didn't feel nothing. But I knew within my heart and in my spirit that I was sincerely repenting from God. And God, I'm sorry. I want to be saved. God, I want to be, I want to come back to you, God. Man. Preacher said, if you said that in sincerity. See, that's the point. People are saying it, but they're not saying it in sincerity. Mm -hmm. They're just repeating what the pastor said. Right. But they ain't doing it in sincerity. All right? But I was, I was serious about it. I didn't feel nothing. So after we went through, you know, I clapped along with them. They was clapping with me, and, and they said, well, how you feel? And I said, I feel all right. What you think? And I said, what did God do? I said, right then, I said, God saved me. But I didn't feel nothing. I had to be confident in the fact that when I repented, I repented in sincerity and knowing that God will wash away my sins and take away my sins and knowing that he would not turn me away that comes unto him. And I knew because I did it in sincerity that God saved me and I didn't want to go back to the world no more. But still, I missed that. Didn't happen. The next time I came back to church, no, I went home. I didn't go nowhere that night. I told you I had a plan to go that night. God saved me. When I, God saved me, I didn't go to the party anyway. I didn't do the thing anyway. Amen. I went home. I said, I'm going to be saved. Even though I don't feel it. I said, but it's not about feeling. A lot of times people say, I ain't feel nothing. I ain't, I ain't feel nothing. So I ain't saved. See, that's a trick from the enemy. Mm -hmm. I don't feel nothing. See, sometimes God will try you and test you. Some people, God come back. Some people come back to God and they, they, God just lay them out on the floor and they begin to speak in tongues and they begin to praise God. But I didn't feel none of that. And I knew I had it, but I lost it. But you know what that meant for me? That meant I had to keep on having faith in God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In spite of not feeling it, in spite of not the devil talking say you ain't got it I said yeah I'm going to show you I went home and busted up all my records she'll tell you records I bought busted them up put them in the garbage and I said here I want God to know I'm serious I paid some money for them records too but I busted them up put them in and I kept going to church one day she came one day she came home and she said uh he haven't shouted yet. She said, 
He said, yeah, but he will. I think it was her or him that said he will. He's going to get back into his shower. And she said, she told me that. And I said, yeah, you think so? But I didn't murmur and complain. See, this, the just should have walked by what? Faith. And not by feeling. And sight. Because there's going to be some times in your, in your walk of living and holiness, you ain't going to feel God sometimes. Mm-hmm. Oh, y'all better come on amen, with me now. Amen, amen, you're right. But you got to know that you know that you still say. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 So anyway, one Friday night, I believe it was, I went to church as usual, had my Bible with me, and the service went up, and Brother Willis was out there in the floor. <laughs> the power of God and the joy of God just overshadowed, and I've been shouting and dancing and praising God and glorifying God ever since. Come on now, right, but I had to believe for certain that I wanted to that God was going. I knew God was going to keep me if I wanted to be kept, right. but I had to show myself honorable before God, mm-hmm, serious mm-hmm. before God, Amen. Before He allowed this mm-hmm. overshadowing to start coming. And I started growing in God, growing in God. Next thing I know, I became a minister, an elder. Now God has made me a bishop. But you know what? Because I still had to hang on to God. You don't know where God is going to take you. If you give your life to God. But let's go back. (laughs) I just wanted to give you that testimony. Amen. But still talking about hell. God delivered me. From hell. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, let's go to one. What, did we finish that? Yes, sir. Uh, we went to the 15. Yeah, 15. Mm-hmm. We did 15, right? Yes, sir. I'm, I hope what I just said, because I just went, right? I mean, I just went where, where, where I was supposed to go. But the Lord of hosts, 16th verse. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment. And God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. Whatever he do, he send you to hell, he's doing it in righteousness. See? <laughs> Come on you can't now. tell God it's unfair. Amen. It's unfair. It's I thought so you good. was God. I thought Come you was on. fair, but he did. He gave you a chance. That's right. Every day. Every Amen. day he give you a chance to Amen. turn to him and run to yes. him. Yes. Amen. How dare you say he, he, he you know he's not equal? God is merciful and kind. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment. Yes. Because when he judges, he judges in righteousness. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. We might not we judge do. right all the time. But God, whenever he judges us, he judges us in righteousness. Yes. And he's always on point. Amen. Yes, he is. Amen. And, and God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. You can't measure him up like a man. Amen. Man. Amen. You got to separate him from me, from a natural man. That's right. He's God. Oh, yeah. So whatever he do, whatever he happens, amen, it's fair. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes people like to say that it ain't fair the way God got, the, it ain't fair the way the world like that. And it, it ain't fair for you to stay out there in the world neither. No, no. That's right. Who can call God in the council? Come on. That's in the Bible. Are we big enough to call God no. in the council? <laughs> No, sir. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. Amen, amen, amen. <coughs> Second Kings 22, 17. Amen. Because they have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands, therefore my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. Now, this is the other side of God. Hmm. Amen. To all of those that think God is just a pushover. Amen. And you know, he's meek, he's all that. He's meek, he's humble, he's loving, he's kind. But there's another side to God. Mm-hmm. And God will show you his other side. Yes, he will. There were times he had to show his people the other side. Amen. When they disobeyed, he punished them. There's another side when you uh, chastising your children. (laughs) One time you could be laughing and and playing with them and whatnot and, you know, buying stuff for them. But there's other times you got to get that behind. 
That's the other side of you. Come on now. Because they did wrong. Yes. Now, Lord. how come you can chastise your children, but God can't chastise his children? All right now. Uh oh. Amen. Answer that question. Amen. How come it's unfair for right. God to chastise his children? If you understand his creation. Amen. But you can you can chastise yours. Who gave you the right to chastise? See. Well, I brought them in this world. Oh. So God didn't bring you in this world. Uh -huh. Think about, Think about it. it now. Amen. <laughs> you got the privilege to say yes or no. But God ain't got the privilege to say what's right and what's wrong. Oh, it's quiet. It's, it's quiet. Right. But he said, because they have forsaken me and have burned incense, God told them not to burn incense to other gods because God was their God. Yes. He brought them out of bondage. Amen. And he told Amen. them right up front, thou shalt not serve no other God Amen. but me. Amen. Make no graven image. Come, Come on. on now. We do that to our kids. What did I tell you not to do? Mm -hmm. what, come on now. And you don't be smiling either. <laughs> because you want them to take you serious. Right. God wants us to take him serious. Seriously. Right. Amen. He ain't smiling when you sinning. That's right. He ain't smiling because you messing up. No, 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 no. He ain't smiling because you know you think you're getting away with it. Come He's on He's frowning now. on you. He's upset with the wicked every day. Yes, that's the word. That's the word. Amen. Because they have forsaken me and have burned this, therefore my wrath. Did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. He wasn't laughing. But my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. In other words, you can't put it out. I started it. Mm -hmm. That's the way hell going to be. It ain't going to be quenched. It ain't gonna, can't nobody put it out. The fireman can't even put it out. All them trucks and stuff going to be burned. All right. Jeremiah 4 and 4, what did that say? Circumcise yourselves to the Lord and take away the foreskins of your heart. Now, this is what God commanded the children of Israel to do, is to circumcise themselves. But to us, it's a spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. Circumcise by the Spirit of God. But they had to do it by flesh. Uh-huh. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord and take away the foreskins of your heart, ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. lest my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doing. You see how God hates evil? Amen. Amen. God hates evil. He ain't happy because you, oh man, ain't that cute? He having another man's wife. No, no, he he he, 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 he smiling on that. Amen. Come on. You gonna have to pay for that, brother. You gonna have to pay for that, sister. Yes, Lord. Amen. And take away the foreskin of your heart. It's not just see they thought because they was being circumcised naturally, but they were still sinning anyway. That was going to make it okay with right, God. But it right. didn't make it okay with God. No, it didn't. Your heart's got to be That's right. Clean. Still got to be right. It's still, your heart got to be right. Amen. Take away that, 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 that nasty, evil spirit that you got. That sinful spirit. Yes. Of your heart. It's got to be in you. It's got to be part of your heart. Doing it out naturally don't save you. And that's what they thought because they were circumcising and giving up. But they had to live right. Yes, amen. Paul even told them. Amen. <laughs> it ain't about circumcision. But we had to be circumcised by the Spirit of God. Go ahead. Ezekiel 20, 45 through 49. Is this all right? Amen. Uh-huh. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying. Now, I might not be rabbing back, screaming and hollering. But sometimes people need to be taught. Amen. They need to really be sat down and listen. Uh-huh. Moreover, uh -huh. and I'm giving you the scriptures too. I'm Amen. giving you it's out of the Bible. Uh-huh. Ezekiel Mo 20, 45 through 49. Uh-huh. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, mm -hmm. Son of man, set thy face toward the south, mm -hmm. and drop thy word toward the south, mm -hmm. and prophesy against the forest of the south field mm -hmm. and say to the forest of the south 
hear the word of the Lord. That's what we doing now. We crying out. We crying out to the people. Amen. And we telling the people, hear the word of the Lord. Amen. We ain't just doing this because we feel like it. We doing it because, well, we feel like it, but I'm saying we're not just doing it just to be doing it, but we doing it because God put it in our spirit and heart, and we want somebody to be saved just like us. Amen. We don't want you to go to hell. We want you to go to heaven with us. Amen. But he said, cry against the fours of the south field. And say to the fours of the south, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God, uh-huh. Thus said the Lord God, behold, I will kindle a fire in thee, and it shall devour every green tree in thee. Mm -hmm. And every dry tree, the flaming flame shall not be quenched, and all faces from the south to the north shall be burnt therein. Mm -hmm. And all flesh shall see that I, the Lord, have kindled it. It shall not be quenched. Mm -hmm. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, they say of me, doth he not speak parables? No. This is what God said, and it was real. Amen. What he spoke Amen. was going to happen. And don't you know that we are styled as trees? We're styled as trees. Amen. So when God speaks to us, he speaks to us like, like in parable here, in, like he's talking to the forest, like he's, to the trees. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, he's really talking to people. Mm -hmm. Because we grow. You know, we're supposed Amen. to be greenery have greenery but you know <laughs> we're spotted see a lot of people trees are spotted amen <laughs> tainted amen amen uh -huh. behold i will kindle the fire in thee don't you know god knows how to stir up his prophets all right now that's what god do he'll kindle the fire in us to give you the word yes amen to warn you amen and i don't care how they try to put you down and say it ain't god Amen. That fire will be in you and it won't be quenched. Amen. Uh-huh. Let's go to Mark 9.43. But I also related that to the lake of fire. Amen. God is not going to put it out after so many That's years. That's right. That's right. It ain't going to be quenched. Can't nobody quench it. Can't nobody Amen. put it out. You can't even blow it out. But it's going to be forever. Uh-huh. Mark 9, 43. Uh -huh. And if thy hand offend thee, what? cut it off. Uh -huh. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. This is what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. When he came down here, he came down preaching. Yes, he did. He came down warning. And if the hand offend you, I don't care. Don't you, you can't use it. <laughs> well, this is happening. Cut it off. If the hand offend thee, cut it off. It, mm -hmm. it is better for you to be entered into the life maimed. So you're going through. So you feel it down, feeling like God ain't there. He's just using a, an example here. For thee to enter into life maimed and to having two hands and then go to hell. What is going to profit you? Mm -hmm. To have everything. I'd rather be without and go to heaven than to have and go to hell. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying. Amen? Amen. And we know how, how valuable our, our hands are to us. Amen? We, we Amen. need our hands, but when we lose it, we do without it, don't we? Amen. Same way when it comes down to this worldly life. We don't have to have it. Come on. But we got to give it up. And he said, having to go into hell, into the fire that never be quenched. Can't nobody put it out. Amen. This is another scripture that lets you know Amen. that there is a hell. Yeah, all right. Amen. Read it. Get it. Isaiah 66, 22 through 24. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make. Yeah, There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. This old have this old work this old world is gonna be burned up. Amen. It's gonna be renovated, purified yeah, yeah. by fire. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Amen. By fire. He's gonna speak the word. 
But the saints going to be called away. Amen. Uh-huh. For as the new heaven and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, said the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. Go ahead. 23rd. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, said the Lord. Mm -hmm. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses That's of the, the men. That's the part I wanted to see. Wanted, wanted to say. Go ahead. And what now? And they shall go and forth. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. You see what God, this is prophecy. Amen. This is what God is going to do. He's going to allow those, amen, that, that was caught up in, in, the, in the air. He's going to allow them to, to see what they missed. He's going to allow them to see them in the lake of fire. Saying, woe is me. Oh, y'all better come on. Amen. Now. Come on. That's the word. We just got Amen. to read. It. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that transgressed against God. For their worm shall not die. Their soul will not die. Amen. It won't burn up. That spirit will not die. That flesh will be fixed. Well, it will not burn up. Amen. Neither shall the fire be quenched. Can't nobody put it out. Amen. And they shall be abhorring unto all flesh. Mm -hmm. They're going to be crying out, woe is me, woe is me, crying out, deliver me. But it's too late. Yes, sir. I'm reading this from the amen, Bible. Amen, amen. Prophecy. Yes. He Come letting on. us know this now before it comes. What you going to do about it? Somebody Come open on, up the pit to let see you. Falling. It's, it's amazing. Amen. Think about it now. This is real. This ain't fake. This ain't no. This amen, ain't, amen. This ain't no fiction book. This is no fictitious. This is not fictitious. This is real. Yes, it is. You yes, don't have to is, believe sir. it, but it's real. Amen. I believe amen. it. Amen. To the saving of the soul. I yes, believe it. Yes, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you believe it amen. to the saving of the soul? Come on now. Come on. Come on. Amen, 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 hallelujah. You know you ain't going to like Glory it if somebody, somebody put you in, 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 in torment in a, in a behind bars and they let people come by and look at you. See, look at him. See, look at him. That's what he's going through now because he wasn't. That'll be torment to you. Embarrassing. But those people that in hell ain't going to even know that people going to be looking over. Mm -hmm. Because they're going to be definitely falling forever. And if, and no, I mean God is awesome. How you have a bottomless pit? I'm trying bottomless pit. I'm still. I'm trying. I was trying to figure that out. So the same. I was trying bottomless. Man, I mean ever falling, mm -hmm. forever weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. Look, can I say this? If I can put a little fear in you, I'm going to try to do it. Hoping that that will do it. Because, you know, some people say, well, you know what? That don't scare me. Well, I hope it motivates you to do what you know you're supposed to do. But some people said, I'm not. I heard people say this. Even people in the church said, I ain't hell scared. I am. I am too. Amen. And I'm happy yes, to say I it. Am. I'm hell scared. Yes, I am. Amen. Brother said, I ain't. The brother said. I ain't, he said, I ain't hell scared. He said, I, I just love God. I had to learn how to love God. Amen. Did we come in here loving God? Come on now. Think about it. You had to learn how to love God. Amen. I was thinking about this t yesterday. I said, when I first met Evangelist, and I saw her and introduced to her, I wasn't in love with her. And I didn't dislike her. She was just another person. And that's the way some people, that's the way God is with some people. He's just God. 
They have no kind of feeling what one way or the other. Mm-hmm. He just God. When you first got in this world, you didn't have a love for your family. You had to learn how to love. Mm-hmm. And that love came by the things that they did for you mm-hmm. and how they took care. But then that love began to grow. I'm, I'm trying to get somewhere now. See, when, I, I, when, we first got, when we first came into church, we had to learn how to love God. God t- Matter of fact, he told us how to love him mm-hmm. by keeping his commandments. Amen. Keeping his saying. That proves to me that you love me. Because if you're doing just the opposite, he's saying you don't love me. Amen. Am I right about it? Amen. If you really love a person, you wouldn't hurt them, would you? No, no. You wouldn't go upside their head. No. Mm-mm. How can you tell them, man, I got a, a love for my wife, and you always going upside her head and fussing at her and stuff? That ain't no love. Mm-mm. You've Mm-mm. been deceived. But God is telling us how to love him. Amen. And as we go on in him, we begin to, that love begin to grow deeper and deeper. And as like I was saying, Amen. when I first met her, there wasn't no love there. I didn't hate her neither. But then as I began to get to know her and be around her, and we began to talk and, and laugh, and we looked like we had something in common, and, you know, things started, started developing. We didn't get together right then and there because God had to do some things because we just couldn't marry anybody. We had to marry those that are, those that are sanctified, sanctified people. Because that's unequally yoked when you marry a sinner. That's Bible. Be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. Amen. So that love began to grow, and it got bigger and bigger, and it's still great. Amen. Over the years, it gets greater. It looks like you get Amen. much closer. And the same way it ought to be about God. Yeah. That love that you have for God ought to get greater and greater and bigger and look like you ought to be closer to God than you were when you first got Amen. saved. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. How dare you say you love God and you ain't keeping his commandments? Come on now. Devil is a lie and you too. Yes, he is. See? Amen. How did I get there? Amen. But people say, I love God. Matthews 25, 41. And I'm almost through. This Amen. is just part one. Matthews 25, 41 through 46. What did it say? Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Did it say that? Amen. Is that a typographical error? Not at all. Now, if you read before that, there's going to be two, one on this side, the righteous on one side, and another on the other side. Mm -hmm. The righteous is going to be sent to heaven. Amen. But the ones that are left, on the left hand, left hand. <laughs> I don't want to be on his left hand. I want to be on his right hand. Amen. To his right hand. So then say, shall he say unto them on the left hand, depart from me. Mm-hmm. Those are all of those that did not accept Christ as their Savior. Did you hear what I'm saying? Amen. It ain't just for the one that, that murdered somebody. It ain't just for somebody that 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 killed somebody. There's somebody that misuse somebody or, or somebody that was homosexual. It's for everybody that are not saved and haven't received. Amen. Now there are some that are going to have greater punishment. Oh, yeah. That's in the Bible too. Amen. Some going to be beaten with few stripes and some going to be beaten with many stripes. Oh yeah. I, I'm in the book boy. I'm in the book. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Go ahead. For I was in hunger and ye gave me no meat. Mm-hmm. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Now, they wanted to know, how come, when? What did I, what did I not do? He said, because you, you didn't do it to others. You didn't do it unto me. But let me just let me just tell you this: just because you didn't give to the poor and give to that and this, God ain't gonna just send you to hell for that. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. But almost stole my thought. God ain't gonna just send you to hell for that. But you can't go to hell for it because the rich man went to hell because he didn't. Because God wants us to reach out. This is what I want to say. Thank you, God. 
sometimes people use that because I give to the poor and I give right. that for righteousness. Mm -hmm. But it's more than giving. That's what I want to say catch right now, there and there. What I now. give, uh -huh. and I, just, I, I give to the poor, and I help the, the, the meek, and you know, the, 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 I help, I help. But that ain't gonna get you into heaven. Are no, you living not. right? Amen. You got to do more than Amen. just say give. It, say it. Say it. Amen. Amen. That's just part of it. Yes. You got to live right. Hallelujah. Well, I give every day. I give every day to this this program and this that and and I help the the, the needy and and I help this one. And I help that. One. But are you saved? See. I had to get that one. God brought it back to my mind. Amen. Because you see that's like, because you didn't give drink to those that were thirsty. You know, but it ain't only just that. This is a lot more to that. This is a lot more to that. You got to live right. You got to give up your sins. And people think, like I said, people think because they they are good Samaritan that they're going to heaven. Well, God knows my heart because I'll give in a minute. I'll give to the church and I'll give and I pay my tithe. Tithes ain't gonna get you into heaven. All right. If you stop paying your tithes, it'll go get you in hell, but it won't get you in heaven. Because you're stealing from God. That's book two. That's Bible. Read your Bible. <laughs> Keep going, Vangis. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. This is God's judgment. Amen. And I still say because you do that, don't get you into heaven. But God was adamant about his people being taken care of. Amen. Israel being taken care of. They had to look out for one another. And if they didn't do that, it was a sin. Amen. No, because they were, they were some rich folks. They were able to help, but they didn't help. And it was like, when you do that, you're helping me. Amen. But that wasn't the only thing that got them in the heaven. Right. Like exactly. circumcision. Amen. That's not going to be the... Uh, <laughs> right. Circumcision ain't gonna get you to heaven. Come on now, say Give that. Give it to the poor Amen. ain't gonna get you to heaven. But that's just part of it. Part of it. That's it. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm gonna stop right here. But I want you to know that there is a hell. Yes. There is a hell. So my question still is: After I didn't told you about hell, do you want to go? The decision is yours. I'm going to leave that in your head. I cannot make that decision for you. You got to make that decision for yourself. If the world means so much to you that you're willing to go to hell for it, you're going you're gonna to regret it. How many times that you did certain things and, you know, you felt like, you know, hey, it ain't nothing. I can handle it. But then after you did it, you regretted it. And sometimes it brought some some bad consequences. Going to hell is worse than, than what you can receive down here on earth. There's nothing, no worse than that. Going to hell forever, burning forever and ever and ever. Oh, I've got some more scriptures I want to bring to you because we can go to different ones, Revelation and all that, tell you about heaven and hell. Amen. But the choice is yours. Yes. Who do you choose to serve? God or man. Oh, gracious Father, we thank you yes, Hallelujah. for your word. And we know that your word goes out to accomplish what it will. And we know that this word is not always going to be received, oh God. But we know that you have, you have committed us to preach your word, yes, to preach salvation, to preach deliverance, amen, to the people, amen, that don't have it in their hearts and in their minds. We ask you that you bless right now, God. Touch somebody's heart, oh God. 
in the name of soften somebody's heart right now by the word that they have heard, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. We know that you're able, oh God, to save and deliver, oh God, because it is not your desire that people be lost and go to hell, oh God, but they might repent, oh God, and turn to you, oh God, that they might have everlasting life, God. Move right now, God. Move right now, God. Touch somebody's heart. Touch somebody's mind, oh God. Let them know that this is real, God. Real. This is not fictitious. This is not just something that we're just saying, but we're warning the people. We are prophets, oh God, sent by you to declare holiness and sanctification. Amen. That nobody be lost. We thank you and we glorify you, oh God, for the word. And we know that your word goes out and accomplishes what it will. Yes. And it will not return back void. Until next week. Amen. God bless you. Pray for us as we pray for you. Amen. Give God a victory hand praise. Amen. My brother.